Hello, 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 everybody here is Top Joko Wild again talking about different topics and sides. Remember, guys, that we create and design this podcast to let everybody know about Harvard University and the magazine of Harvard Medical School. You can also visit our official website, which is magazine.hml.harvard.edu. You will be able to browse thousands of thousands of articles by issue or by topic. You will be asking Dr. Wild which topics do we have? Research, community, education, care delivery, hours, and education. The article to review today is a child's need for a sleep. A good deal of a child's brain growth and development occurred during sleep. Hey parents, tired of those out of control kids throwing embarrassing trantos wherever they go? It starts a YouTube parody video. You have got it with parenting? The informational style voice board exclaims as beat up mother checks for her. But wait, there is a solution introducing nap time, the latest most effective tool for child tantrum prevention could to extent of brittle parents instantly quieting their children with a few sprites of a bottle full of a filter product. With almost 26 million views, the video, written and directed by the Checkley Brooklyn based producer Chris Cuffle, has clearly struck a shore, but to millions of parents nap time is not a joke. From Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard University, we continue doing this review. It's always been one of the huge core issues for people living with infant, toddlers, and small children, says Perry Class. She is a pediatrician and the most recent author of the best medicine how science and public health gave children a future. We go through different cultures moments in terms of where our major anxieties are, but the sleep training and sleeping through the night versus the time napping are a constant. A According to Matthew Walker, a professor of neuroscience and psychology at the University of California, Berkeley, an author of What We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of a Lip and Dream Pre Industrial Societies in Western Europe, Africa, the Middle East, South Asia, and Latin America, arranged their routines around being fast sleeping. In some regions, people began their sleep when they sunset, waking during the night to read, write, spray, socialize, or have sex, and squeeze seen a second sleep in the hours before course began the down. But Walker writes what this sleep porn and what likely a culture phenomenon. More often, he writes, the truth partner of the basic sleep for which there is an anthropological, biological, and genetic evidence is one consisting of a longer bulk of continuous sleep at night followed by shorter mid-afternoon nap. Because of this behavior, children's sleep partner were not seen as significantly different from those of grown-ups, with little ones presumably fulfilling their needs for 2 to 10 additional hours hours a day, depending upon their age, however and whenever they could. One factory work came along in the late 1700s, adult schedules began to become more regimen and children sleep partner followed suit. In the years since advice on child rereading has become an industry and scientists have learned more about how much sleep children really need, when they need it's which sleep partner is best and what happens to young brains during sleep. Much is still unknown. But it has become clear that sleep is essential and learning, memory formation, emotional regulation, and physical and mental development and the naps are essential for part of the child's health and well-being. Children need a lot of sleep 
up to 17 hours a day for infants under 3 months or 12 hours per night for 18 years old, according to the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention. While naps count toward total sleep necessary at any age, they play a special role for young children because of the interaction of their circadian rhythms and the homeostatic process known as a sleep pressure or in low terms tiredness. Scientists still aren't sure why sleep pressure builds more quickly in children than adults, but some suggest it is because they usually can get 13 to 14 hours of underinterrupted sleep, in part because they must eat frequently and they need naps to make up for the sleep they don't get at night. But there is more to it than simply getting enough sleep in 24 hour cycle. Numerous studies have shown that napping clears the brain, especially the hippocampus, a seahorse shaped structure in each hemisphere that plays an important role in learning and memory, so that it can be filled again with new information. Rebecca Spencer, a professor of cognitive neuroscience at the University of Massachusetts, Umber, described the hippocampus as a short term filling system. All the new things you encourage in a day get thrown there before being sorted into the cortex, which is a bigger long-term feeling system that can sort things by type during the sleep, she said. So if you learn grandma used to be a ballerina and you already know she likes to nip, then those two things are integrated into your concept of grandma, which helps you create, generalize, and also makes each memory easier to find. Kids are constantly bombarded with new information. They are not only learning the alphabet, for example, but also that they skip the times and blue and boonies are furry things that adult brains take for granted. So we think the hippocampus that need to be cleaned out more often. Spencer research has found that children who nap soon after learning new words, for example, remember the words 80% of the time, as opposed to 30% of those who don't nap. Children who don't nap also score an average of 10% lower on word retention tests compared to children who do nap. What surprised Spencer through was the ability to remember what was learned continue into the next day. What that tells us is that sleep has to take place shortly after learning for the learning to take root, she said. Emotional memory and reactive are affected by naps in basically the same way. As any parents confronted by a grumpy towards nose, kids are exposed to emotional scenarios all morning long, says Spencer. At the level of mom made me put my shoes on and I didn't want to, or I didn't get my favorite food for breakfast, or studies show that if they take a nap, they are cool as a cucumber. It gives them a clean sleep when they wake up because all emotional memories from the morning are clean out, so if they see a classmate acting up in the corner, they are less bothered by it. If there is not nap, the emotional law is never released and they may overreact too.
Not getting the naps can cause big problems for the little kids. We see attention issues, emotional disruption, academic difficulties, mental health problems, weight gain, even change in growth. Says Laura, she's a medical doctor, pediatrician, who says she discusses sleep with parents every time they come for a visit. Almost all humans' grow hormone is produced during a slow way or deep sleep, which a 45 minute nap is long enough to produce. Lack of sleep can result in decreased growth hormone secretion and cortisol levels. D. Urlan adds, I generally don't tell parents that because I we completely freak them out and the problem is usually temporary. Children whose sleep routines are disrupted because of illness, according to Spencer, will often experience a growth poor once they recover the normal sleeping regime. Kids who are already increased risk for challenging social behaviors may also have a harder time sleeping, which may can create a vicious cycle resulting in more challenging behaviors, and that's true not just for a younger kids. While children mature at different rates must grow out of a need for a nap by around age 5, but now we live in such sleep-deprived culture that naps can be beneficial longer, says Denise Clark Pope, a senior lecturer of Stanford Graduate School of Education and an alumna of Harvard Graduate School of Education. In 2001, Denise Arthur taught in school how we are creating a generation of straight out materialistic and miseducated students. A paper presented at the American Academy of Pediatrics 2019 conference found that only about half United States children aged 6 to 17 are getting enough sleep and that those who aren't deficient of measure of childhood florins, such as showing curiosity about new things, caring about their school work, staying and when faced with a challenge and finishing tasks they are begun. Research published in Lancet Child and Adolescent Health in August birth this out and highlights the neurological outcomes of insufficient sleep. The analysts drew on data from the NIH ongoing adolescent brain cognitive development study looking at more than 8,000 between 9 to 10 years old, about half of whom got less than 9 hours of sleep at night. The sleep deprived children had more mental health and behavioral issues than their peers who slept 9 or more hours at night and were more likely to be depressed, anxious, and aggressive. Furthermore, brain imaging show that the less rested children had a smaller volume of gray matter in the areas of the brain responsible for attention, memory, or inhibition control, and these neurological deficits didn't dismiss quickly. The researchers found that the lower volumes were still evident two years after the initial evaluation. That coffee shops are now on every corner and energy drink companies are marketing to teens only exacerbate the issue. Doctors say, of course, as electronic media young people have poorest impulse control, others might not respond to tests because they know it can wait, but kids don't let it wait, especially with apps like Snapchat, where test is only there for 24 hours, and their friends say, why didn't you open my snap right away? Why didn't you snap back? These teenage phenoms are means that you can never get a screen break so your mind can quiet down. A 2019 survey by the nonprofit Common Sense Media found that almost a third of teens sleep with their phones in their beds, and a review of 20 studies published in JMMA Pediatrics in 2016 found that use of mobile devices after lights out was associated with less sleep and poorest sleep quality. Alright guys, remember you can access to all these beautiful articles from the magazine at Harvard Medical School. We continue. Parents, 
also say and I agree are often judging of the one right answer and it's with many health matters their simple is in one. Children are really different temperamentally and in terms of partners, say Dr. Class. Anybody who had more than one child know this. You may have an easy kid and a hard kid, a good sleeper or a happily naps whenever and waves a smile or none who harder a put down and harder to wake up. It is important not to look at this is as one side fit all situation and to give parents the sense that they are doing something wrong. Some parents just have a harder assessment. Alright guys, this article has been brought by Elizabeth Weman at Boston Best Graduate in Cambridge, Massachusetts at Harvard Medical School. I hope you have a beautiful day. See you next time. Bye bye.